presidency backs Bahari and says he has delivered promises made to Nigerians. And Nigerian Senate asks the United Kingdom government to pardon Ike Kuramadu in organ trafficking case. This is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Annika. The presidency said yesterday that it was mischievous to paint a bleak, pessimistic and frequently inaccurate picture of the state of the nation and the outgoing President Muhammad Buhari's leadership. A statement by the senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity, Garba Shehu, said in the post-election period of heightened tension and disinformation, he saw it fit to set the record straight. According to him, those who said President Buhari inherited an economy in disarray were right, and Nigeria had become an international terror cell where Boko Haram controlled the size of Belgium within the country's borders. He also added that external reserves had maintained a healthy growth throughout these eight years, and within two years of the Buhari administration, exports have more than doubled from the 2015 records. Joining us to discuss this is Daya Kayade, a public affairs analyst, and Okewaye Sharafa Omoyele, a legal practitioner. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. Yes, good evening. It's my pleasure uh, being with you on this evening. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Well, it's my pleasure to be on the program. All right, great. Thank you very much. Let me start with you, Mr. Okewaye. Um, Let's look at the president's promises um, for 2015. The president did, t did tell us that um, he was going to change a lot of things. He was going to deal with unemployment. He was going to deal with security. Three top things. And, of course, deal with corruption. How well would you score, Mr. President, in terms of those three top promises? Did he deliver? Mr. Sharafa, can you hear me? Yeah, I would too. Go ahead. Well, it's my pleasure to be on this program. Uh, as a matter of fact, President Muhammad Dubwari has zoomed up it as our president when Nigeria was facing a lot of challenges. Body on security, uh, body on economy, and um, Within eight years of his administration, he has been able to stabilize Nigerian nation. If we cast our mind back to present it with Tony Bari took over, Boko Haram insurgency was actually assuming a very dangerous trend to the extent that they were in control of most states in the northeast of this country. In fact, they were also their flag in almost all the local government in that side of the country. And they were marching on to take over North Central and North West. But when President Bari came on board, he was able to dismantle uh, the, the, the cell the Boko Haram was having in almost all the states in the North East. To the extent that today, Boko Haram are no longer having grip of a single time, not a top of local government. What we're having currently, we are guerrilla warfare, and it's a very difficult thing. Each conventional way to fight a guerrilla warfare, it's a difficult thing not to deploy technology uh, asana in fighting uh, guerrilla warfare. So, to my mind, President Obama Duvari. In the area of security has actually done well. In the area of economy, if you look at our, our foreign reserves, it is robust, it is healthy compared to when it took over. I mustn't forget that this government has experienced turbulency in politics, international politics, in the economy. And don't forget, in your 2020, the whole world experienced a COVID pandemic, and we are yet to actually come out of that challenge. 
So we should give it to the current president. That he has tried to ensure that our economy is stable. Despite the challenges in the world economy. And as a matter of fact, uh, the government has been able to stabilize so many things. And Nigerians are actually better off for it. Uh, if you look at the other policies, uh, if you look at this government, we might not actually feel the impact now. But I can assure you, the incoming administration will definitely consolidate all the gains the government has achieved in the area of security, area of economy, and area of infrastructure. Look at our roads. Most of our roads have been reconstructed, repaired, so many. And not only that, uh, rail transportation has greatly improved. Today, we are having great transportation between Kaduna and Abuja, Lagos and other towns in Southwest. And they are now planning to have rail from Kano to Portaco, which in my mind will boost our economy, will improve a lot of things. So I want Nigerians to believe that Rome was not built in a day. This government has actually laid foundation, solid one, for incoming administration to build on in the area of infrastructure, area of security, and area of economy. We might be saying that we are um, experiencing some challenges. Yes, uh, we must understand that it's not always easy to have a very good, robust administration without sacrifice. That's what we are experiencing now. And I can assure Nigerians, we have gone past Egypt. We are moving on to the Israel of this country. And God's willing, all of us will love and be happy in a couple of month or year when the government takes over. Mr. Sharfa, I'm interested in some of these, um, you know, assertions that you've made, especially when you say that a lot has been done and that we will laugh. So we're, we're supposed to wait till the eight-year tenure is over for us to be able to laugh. I mean, we couldn't laugh last week. We couldn't laugh um, um, in December. We couldn't laugh um, in in January or in February or in March when we had the Naira and the cash crunch. So we're going to wait until the president hands over and then we're going to be able to laugh, really. Um, how well... No, 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 just hold on because um, you've made very interesting um, points about dealing with insecurity and how things have changed and, um, you know, roads have and infrastructure has been put together. Uh, out of all of the monies that we've borrowed, I mean, I'm sure that you know that our debt profile has almost hit the roof, if not literally taken the roof off. And, and we've had stolen crude every single day um, in this country, so much so that nobody can account for that crude. And the president sits as the petroleum minister. All of this is happening under his watch. And you're telling me where you are, that he has been able to deliver on the dividends of democracy. Mr. Kewe, you need to turn off your television. We're having a feedback, please. Now. Mr. Kowai, now, please, now. please turn off your TV so that we don't have that feedback again. Thank you. All right. I've done, I've done that. Now, I said something now. And I want to repeat. Go back to the continuum. When the government took over in 2016, it took over both assets and liability of their own government. And what the uh, inherited was a lot of issues which it tried in its first term to solve and resolve. His second term was used in laying a very good foundation for our economy, a very good foundation for infrastructure, a very good foundation for our security. Now, I, I mentioned Earlier, the issue of Boko Haram, this one, was becoming a very threatening national challenge when President uh, Jonathan was in office. When he came on board, President Mohamed Buhari ensured 
that the government totally demobilized Boko Haram insurgency in the northern, northern Nigeria. Today, we are not having, as we are having, I mean, but but we what have other forms of insecurity, Mr. Kewe. We have never in the history of this country could a, a moving train be stopped, but it was done under the Buhari administration, and people were kidnapped. So dealing with Boko Haram, yes, all fine and well, but then there are other issues. Mr. Kewe. Please decease from turning on your television because that's giving us a feedback. What I said was that what we are currently currently now is rather gorilla warfare. And that will be because we have a conventional method <clears throat> to subdue a gorilla warfare. That's why you are still having four cases of kidnapping here and there. And they are striking, monitoring or guarding or studying our security apparatus. And it is easy because our best local government and fans are poor. That's why I said the government is not thinking that technology must be deployed in meeting the board, security infraction in our various states. And I can assure you, the President of the Administration has made a foundation of solid security network. The economic administration will definitely build on to ensure that finally, the issue of insurgency, kidnapping, banditry, is once and for all put to rest. Okay. But what I'm saying of course, Nigeria and Nigerians are enjoying relative peace for that to protect the queen. And okay. you are doing me that our government activities in all regions of this country are going on as planned. We are not actually having any serious security breaches in any part of the country. Except for security breaches. Which is normal. Which is not actually peculiar to Nigeria. In America, they are experiencing their own security breaches. In UK, they are experiencing their own security breaches. Which means no nation is actually free from security challenges. If you have every security challenges, UK is having with their massive technology know how show that Nigeria, comparatively, we are trying. That's okay. why I'm saying that. So far, so good. The country in Nigeria has been brought under control. Our economy is actually looking up. Okay. Every day. All right. 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 Mr. Okay. Let me go to uh, Mr. Daya Kayade now. Um, Mr. Kayade, uh, let me go back to what. Um, yes, I'm with you. I'm with you. All right. Let me go to what Garbashe who said. Um, I'd like to quote him directly. He said that. Um, um, that the president inherited um, an economy that was in disarray. He said corruption was rampant, all prices were nose diving, and outstandingly, an international terror cell, Boko Haram, controlling a territory of a size of Belgium within the country. But my question is the president obviously knew these things, and that's why he was campaigning, I'm guessing. Isn't that why he was campaigning to run, to deal with Boko Haram, to deal with uh, the economy and give us the kind of government that we were asking for? Yes. Am I having the phone? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. You see, I'm going to give my permission. Yes. I'm going to give my permission. I'm going to be saying on some kind of music and factors. Now, let us take security as a first point. When this government was campaigning, it talked about insecurity. I was going to face it clearly. And interestingly, the, the candidate of APC then 
2014 or right, 2015, used to be a soldier that we thought had all it takes to face insecurity and other types of, of, of uh, insurgents within our nation. But unfortunately, by the time he got to power, the incidences of insecurity in our country became so alarming to the extent that even some government started shouting that insecurity is making their state of governable for them. Now the question is this. The so-called community that the, in quote now, Boko Haram occupied, what were they doing there? Were they not exploiting the mineral resources there? So the extent that there was a news all over the place that some aircraft were supplying food items, water, and other things to all those abandoned places. That is why. Two, I follow a lot of international news. I'm a poor, said on CNN some time ago, and she said, any leader that is unable to fight insurgents within his political enclave within 24 48 hours is an, I mean, I mean, it's part of that thing. It's just like in that office there. You are having peace. You have been operating for years that I've known you peacefully. And somehow, a kind of uh, encumbrance now came in. And you are all seeing it. And you are not attacking it. And you want to tell me your, your management is not an accomplice? Your management is not an accomplice? Can I box your bubble on this? Still on insecurity. An American was kidnapped somewhere in Africa and was brought down to Nigeria. And the American president said he was that American released alive within 24 hours. And from all the way from America, they came to Nigeria and they rescued that person. Is that what, is that what we call purposeful leadership? And some people are traumatizing you in your country. And you are calling a gorilla warfare? A gorilla warfare? And you cannot tackle it? Anyway, let's leave that because of our time. Let's leave it to it. Let's come to economy. Let's come to economy. What, what were the economic indices that made Nigeria the fastest growing economy in Africa pre-2015, because the data are there, not manufactured by me, but even by our scientific our bureau in Nigeria. All right? What were the indices then? What do we have now? I mean, I, I wouldn't want to use, I wouldn't want to use words that, that will not be easily discerned by listeners. But rather, I will go to the basics in 2014 to 2015, what was our exchange rate? That's number one. What was the productive capacity of our industry? That's number two. When we're looking at when we looking at rate of employment, what were we having then now? I mean, what were we having until now? How much was a bag of rice then? How much is it now? I'm talking about I'm talking about uh, uh, market price indices. What do we have then? What do we have now? Are you talking about economy? Listen, what what, what was the rate of of people, professionals, learned people, living our country then till now? I mean till now. It is just now that we're not having uh, I mean very loud. That kind of syndrome. Now, 
Mr. Kaede, let me just come in there. Imagine, I'm, I'm so sorry, Mr. Kaede, let me come in there. Me. Okay. Coming. Just, just hold on, just hold on. I want to correct. I want to correct an impression. The Jaguar syndrome that you're talking about is not. This is every single time in the in the life of in the history of this country. We have seen. We keep seeing people leave this country in droves. I do not. I do not exactly believe that it's just under the Buhari administration that people have left this country in droves. I do not want to believe that because there are statistics. But I need to correct that impression. There had been before now. There was Andrew. Andrew don't leave the country and all that. But I'm not talking about the rate. The rate of incidents. That's what I'm talking about. I'm doing a part of a comparative analysis. Okay? Okay. Look at the... Look, look at our research institute. And you see a, a lot of researchers living in Nigeria working abroad. I'm a professional. Have we ever seen, have we forever, in the history of our nation, heard our national assembly discussing about the rate of, of, of emigration of, of, of our professionals before? Because it's a written on my That's what I'm talking about. So that it has not been happening before. It happens all over the country. That's what we call, that. what we call migration and, migration and all that now. But the incidents now, Anyway, let's leave economy. Let us come to corruption. I, I'm, I'm sure you have heard that the Senate just approved approved another loan of 32.5 trillion, not billion, trillion naira for the person, which 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 will be taken from the central bank. What is that money meant for? Tell me. The government that is that is having just about three weeks to leave to leave office. No, tell me. And this is this is a money. That was not that was not uh, uh, allowed about a year ago. So what are the factors we consider for such a money? The modest amount of money that is enough for a year project to not be approved. What has happened to the S Y S Y uh uh ESCC chairman that was alleged a lot of a lot of uh, uh, corrupt activities? What happened? What has happened to the NDDC, NDDC, uh, uh, alleged corruption? I'm talking about stop the mic, stop the mic that happened in National Assembly. What has happened? Even the one in NPA, Nigeria Port Authority, whereby these awards are made, was only called before. What has happened? What did I make you allege? What happened now? Mr. Kai, Mr. Kai, let me, let me like come that. in. So tell me, how has this government who is a campaign okay. in the last eight years. There are those, unfortunately, we've lost uh, Mr. Sharaf um on, on uh, this call. But, but the, there, are, there are those who would score the president's uh, administration pretty high in terms of infrastructural development. And, and there are you know, statistics to back that, that the president has not uh, lost it or failed in every single aspect of his administration, uh, that he has been able to do well in terms of infrastructural development. But then quickly, let's talk about, because we have just about two minutes to wrap up here. Um, when, let's talk about what the president can do to change things, to prepare uh, the grounds for this continuity that you're talking about, this government being a continuum. Um, do we see President Buhari you know, laying the foundation for an easier and better governance um, before May 29? Is there even enough room for any changes to be made? Yes, no doubt about it. Government is a continuum. All right? Is that why we are having a more divisive Nigeria than we used to have? But then, stand up. Stand up. The incoming government, the, the, the uh, presidential, uh, president elect, the president elect of Nigeria, has said, that he is going to continue on the legacy uh, that this government is going to leave behind. But my question now is this. What are those legacies? Yes, government is a continuum. But this say because government is a continuum, we will now continue on things that, that, no, that is not edifying us as a people, whereby you go to schools, Universities, the house is appreciated. Okay. Whereby, whereby a lot of people are now into unemployment, 
whereby our economy is going to the grain, whereby our refineries are not working, where are we putting money to, to make our refinery work? We are not borrowing money. We are not borrowing money. So give to people, because we want to remove subsidy that this particular government said was a fraud while they were campaigning. Okay. All right. The government is a consumer. Must we continue in that way? Or we find another way to make our nation, to put our nation okay. on the path of progress, okay. development, and more cohesive. All right. Mr. Dai Kaide is a public affairs analyst and Okewo Sharafa Moyele is a legal practitioner. Unfortunately, we lost him uh, in the middle of this conversation. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Kaide. Yeah, this is my pleasure. All right. Well, up next, we turn our attention to the Senate's plea to the United Kingdom government over Ike Ekwere Madu's organ trafficking case. Stay with us. <laughs>